Back with us now, Florida Congresswoman Kat Kamek of House Homeland Security. It's great to have you back on. Okay, so the White House rejects hey. a border disaster declaration. Why do they reject that? Because Panama is warning 60,000 migrants are potentially coming here and that it caught migrants with ties to Al Qaeda. Uh, Congressman uh, t uh, Gonzalez put out a press release about Panama saying that. So why reject a border disaster declaration? Because it flies in the face of everything that they have been trying to shove down Americans' throats. They keep trying to convince Americans and really the world that the border is secure, just as Secretary Mayorkas recently said in our Homeland Security hearing. After listing out a litany of failures on their part, he still stood by his assessment that it was secure. So it's political suicide at this point after they have double, tripled, quadrupled down on this narrative that the border is secure. But ask anybody from a member of Congress who's been there like myself to a member who actually serves along the border to any of the rank and file Border Patrol agents. It's not secure. We are seeing known individual individuals on the known terrorist watch list. That is a fact. We have over 308,000 gotaways. That is a fact. Historic record breaking levels of narcotics across our borders, landing in our communities. That is a fact. They have record breaking number of apprehensions and apprehensions just mean that they got processed and released into our country. That is a fact. I know that these facts are inconvenient for the administration, but unfortunately, we don't have to answer to them anymore. Under the latest National Defense Authorization Act, Congress took action to declare what is happening on the southwest border a crisis. And when it passes the final version here in the next few weeks, the administration will have to eat crow and finally admit what we knew all along. This so, is a crisis. So how will that come about with the NDAA, the defense bill? What, will ha what are the steps with that? Where the, what, would, what would have to happen? The White House would have to step up and put out a declaration saying that, yes, this is a crisis? So uh, thankfully, uh, Congress makes the laws and the executive branch has to actually execute and, un and uphold the laws that we make. In the NDAA, there is a provision that declares through a sense of Congress, and keep in mind that this is bipartisan, that what is happening on the southwest border is a crisis. Also in the National Defense Authorization that we will finally pass in the next few weeks has language that directs additional troops to the border to finally once and for all secure the border. Americans like myself, we are sick and tired of Congress doing all the talking but no action. This actually provides action behind the, that, those words. So, so it's time that Congress step up and actually make that declaration when the president won't. If the, if the president doesn't declare it a federal disaster, FEMA, you know, disaster, right? You know, in, do, in rejecting that, that means millions of dollars could not go to border communities. But with this defense bill saying it is a crisis, will millions of dollars go to these border communities besides the surging of national guard or troops to the border besides that? Well, we know, and, and, and as the ranking member of the Emergency Preparedness Response and Recovery Subcommittee, the FEMA subcommittee nationally, I have been asking since March 17th about the tally of dollars that FEMA has allocated to the crisis. They just got back to me about two weeks ago. Nearly $100 million has gone to airline tickets and hotel bills for illegals in our country. With this sense of Congress and the money that gets put behind it to direct troops to the southern border, there's nothing that the president can do to stop that. We don't work for Biden. Biden works for the American people. We make the laws and he has to follow them. And you see the governors that are stepping up, going to meet with Abbott, of course, my own governor, Ron DeSantis, who has been fantastic and firm when it comes to securing the border of not just the southwest border and sending mutual aid, but then, of course, Floridians uh, safety and well-being. You're yeah. seeing that they are coming to the table. We have a situation where every state in the country is now a border town you know, and a border state. And violent drug gangs, right? And violent yes. crime ratcheting up in U.S. cities. You're right. Yes. Every state is a border state in that regard because of the yes. flow of drug networks and the pipelines flowing into U.S. states. Your take on the U.S. Supreme Court ruling in favor of former President Trump's plan to use $3.6 billion in things like Pentagon funds for the border wall. The Biden White House had sought, sought to stop that. Uh, but this is a pu big pushback from the Supreme Court against the White House. What do you say? Yeah. I got to tell you, I did a little bit of a happy dance when I heard the news, and I immediately called all of the Border Patrol agents and personally told them what was going on in case they hadn't heard the news, and they were ecstatic. You know, just in the RGV sector, the busiest sector that we have along the southwest border of the nine that we have, 
that had enough appropriations that had been authorized to build 120 miles of fence. Only 21 miles had been completed. Yeah. That is a force multiplier. That means that all the agents that have been working day in and day out, yeah. they have the infrastructure. But, you know, the question is, will the White House job? follow through, right? We don't know if the White House will follow through, but the states are doing it. So we'll stay on that yeah. story. It's an interesting fight. Congresswoman Kat Kamek, you're terrific. We'll have you back on again soon. Uh,